revisit a conversation that I had with someone about Xbox possibly outsourcing their hardware to third party company manufacturers. So we're going to cover all of these things in this episode again of Listener Feedback number 38. I am your host, Keon Mitchell, and again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, kick off your shoes, and relax, because we're going to have a good time today. Yes, indeed. So, as always, before we officially get the episode started, if you want to be a part of the next listener feedback, you can do that two different ways. You can either call in, and the phone number is 443-380-0281 and let your voice be heard. Or you can email the show like my good brother Cody Clark did at the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's get into Mr. Cody Clark's first email. Now, the title of this email is too much of a good thing. He says, tried the first 25 minutes of Sinuous Sacrifice 2. Not my kind of game. Oh, shucks. He said, I get mega uncomfortable with the sound and visuals. Set off all of my triggers. Whoa, had to put it away. Sheesh, is it that immersive, Cody? Man, this brother said it really triggered him. Wow. Well, I, I, man, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, Cody. I mean, a good thing, you know, because it seems like it's really, really immersing you in the um the experience, but a bad thing because it's a it's a trigger. Um, wow, that's something. Let me continue with your email though. He says, what I did see is beautiful, sometimes uncanny valley, sometimes like Jurassic Park feels where my brain and eyes fight with me. So it, that, that, that just means, golly, that is a masterpiece. That's a darn masterpiece when it comes to the graphics. Oh, my goodness. And you know, Cody, I am a sucker for the graphics, my brother. Darn, that sounds good. Um, He says, not going to lie, seen some visual glitches with characters clipping up and down that break the immersion. Mm. He said, made me chuckle in the middle of an extended conversation in game. So it looks like the, it probably could use a couple of patches, Cody, is what you're saying. Maybe nothing too bad, but the clipping, I definitely understand what you mean by that. It definitely takes you out of that immersive experience. Uh, he continues and says, I could see a two-hour walking simulator movie done like this and if it was a topic i liked my money would be took man he says i've seen nothing but glowing reviews that said i surround myself with mostly xbox ecosystem news and twitch streams that just gush on games unless they are toxic or take advantage of the community no i think that um the consensus is overall, even on Metacritic, it got an 81 by the, um, the reviewers and a 78, uh, by the users. So that is still a very, very respectable score. So I think that, um, what you're hearing is correct. Um, you know, some people that even say it's not really their kind of game. I mean, some people have given it very, very bad, uh, reviews. Um, but one thing does seem to hold true and it's a positive is the graphics hold up. So that is something that Ninja Theory can work on and they can get better at. Um, because to me, again, Ninja Theory is a top tier studio. And like I tell y'all, I am biased. I know this, but that talent level is amazing. But I'm going to continue with your email here, Cody, your first one. He says, I feel like this is a more crafted, like a Viking version of, no, he says, I feel like this is a more crafted, uh, yeah, like a Viking version of Heavy Rain. That was one of my favorite joints right there, Cody. He says, a much more clear message and a hyper focus. No need for David Cage or whatever his name was, studio. Yeah, his name was David Cage, a studio head to wax poetic and complain about his cinematic vision. I see Sinuous Vision. It's freaking there. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something, man. Um, 
those kind of games, I was really, really into those. Heavy Rain, I haven't played Detroit Become Human yet, but um, it was another game that they made over at David Cage's uh, studio, which it is it is leaving me. I can't, was it Quantum? Quantic Studios? I, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, those were cinematic um, experiences. So if you're saying that Sinua Saga is like that, oh man, you can count me in because those were, even though they... They were more like point and click kind of adventures, you know, kind of like in that genre to a certain degree. But we do know that with Sinua Saga, too, I mean, you're, you're swinging that sword, brother. You're, you're in the middle of a fight, getting it in, cutting in all kinds. I'm telling y'all, this is the game. This really got me contemplating getting a Series X because I told y'all I can't get it to run on my Samsung TV because my PlayStation controller will not Bluetooth sync up with the TV for some reason. So it's leaving me only one other uh, option, and that's to get the console. And y'all already know that I'm already weary and leery when it comes to actually playing anything on the TV. I'm a, you know, man, man, I'm a, I'm a, older gamer i'm 45 i like to keep with the traditional model of having the console there but let me get on with your email here cody um you continue to say ninja theory did it show not tell he says maybe someday they will take that uh art arsenal handcrafted love of game storytelling and make a cyberpunk Oh, Saba Nior, Nior style game. Oh, that would be nice. Having Ninja Theory work on something like that, that is cyberpunk. Oh, my goodness. You just go through their track record. Heavenly Sword. Um, What was it? Uh, uh, Quest to the West. I always get it wrong, but it was Enslaved. Um, Odyssey to the West. Uh, uh, DMC. Um, and then, uh, you know, um, Sinua Sacrifice and Sinua Saga. That's a solid track. Right? We're not going to talk about the, the Godfather 3 esque game in the room, aka, uh, Bleeding Edge. We ain't, we ain't got to bring that up. That was more of a, more of a, what I would say, uh, um, man, that was just an experiment. They called that a passion project. God, dog. But anyway, Cody, I'm, I'm going to keep on finishing up your email here, but that would be nice. So I would love to see them tackle something, uh, cyberpunk esque. I think it would be amazing. But, uh, you say, uh, if Microsoft is even making single player narrative based games in seven to 10 years and not all MMO, oh, yeah, MMO, uh, BA and first person shooters, Call of Duty expansions, if they even have any studios left in seven years, golly. Cody, I'm going to tell you now, that is a good, that could be a bit of a fear because we do know that right now they are definitely shifting some things around when it comes to um the games and how they're going to be perceived. Um, shutting down the studios, uh, them, you know, studios that actually, again, uh, Tango Gameworks, award-winning studio shutting them down you just don't know where they're going right now it, it it is a very very interesting and i would say a bit of a i mean as far as gaming goes i'm not saying this affects our personal life but as far as gaming goes it's a kind of scary time you know when it comes to the xbox brand so we'll definitely have to stay tuned and see what happens with it as it unfolds cody but cody i know you sent me i got like two more emails well, three more emails here from you let me see I'm, I'm gonna open up your second email here cody and this one is called early console wars that's the name of this one you say okay this is kind of funny for us old dogs i'm gonna open this up cody and see what this what this article is oh shucks atari buys and television brand and oh man i see why you said this ending longest running console war in history all right so let me give these people their credit this article is coming from m dot slash dot org so i'll just read like the first paragraph it says an old school video game rivalry has a new chapter 
Atari, known for for producing one of the first hit home game consoles, has announced the acquisition of longtime rival in television's brand and rights. This is like the equivalent. If we're, you know, just talking about in the modern day, this is like for anybody that doesn't know the history here, this is the equivalent of PlayStation acquiring Nintendo or Nintendo acquiring PlayStation because they were like at that, at that turning point, you know, at that forefront, or if they were still in the game, like Sega taking over Nintendo. This is crazy. This is something else. Now I do understand these are much older brands, not very relevant as far as in today's time but these guys yeah they were duking it out back in the day but let me finish reading this a little bit because this is good he says uh well not he but the article continues to say um the acquisition uh okay it says uh to over 200 games for intelligence let me let me start that over again okay it says uh Okay, they have announced the acquisition of longtime rival in television's brand and rights to over 200 games from Intellivision Entertainment. The two companies were two, no, the two companies were key players in the industry's first console war in the late 1970s and early 80s. Atari plans to expand distribution of Intellivision games and explore new opportunities for the brand. Mike Mika studio head at digital eclipse. Oh, I remember them. They used to make PC games back in the day. Um, an Atari owned game studio commented on the deal saying the acquisition quote ends the longest running console war in history. <laughs> hey Cody, I like this one brother. Yes, indeed, man. Good grief. The two OGs are the OGs, man. Two of the ones that really started this whole gaming culture, you know, really got us invested into the brand. I mean, shout out to the, to the triple quadruple OG, the Magnavox Odyssey, you know, for being the first actual console to ever release. But these two really did kick off that console war, brother. This is where it started. The late 70s, early 80s. Dog on Atari and in television. Man, I appreciate you sending me this, Cody. Thank you so much for that, brother. What a time. Who would have thought that that would have ever happened, though? They dog on got him. Good grief. That's crazy. That's very, very crazy. But yeah, Cody, that was a... A heck of a time. I was, I was blessed enough to have both. Um, matter of fact, I think I told you guys that my cousin, he was the one that gave me his Intellivision. He gave me boxing. You know, it was literally a black and white character on the screen, overhead view and whatnot. Oh man, the graphics. God dog. They look good at the time, man. But you look back at those games. Woo. It was something else. What no story was nothing, but it was the ground. It was the groundwork for what we have today. So now nah, this was awesome, Cody. I really, really appreciate this man. And, um, yeah, they, they, they ended one of the longest running console wars in history. The two triple OGs, man, it started this whole thing. Um, but Cody, I'm, I'm going to take a break from reading your next email for the moment. And I want to jump into something that broke just yesterday, which was the announcement that PlayStation will be having their state of play event later on today at 6 PM. If you're on Eastern standard time, like I am, um, you'll be able to check it out. Now, the one thing that is interesting about this show, and I'm sure you guys will probably be hearing this well after the show, everything will have already been revealed. But the thing that they say that's interesting is, is two things. The show is going to be 30 plus minutes long and they're going to be covering 14 different games that span between the PSVR 2 and the PlayStation 5. And they talked about giving updates to, excuse me guys, to first party studios. Now, I'm sitting here, and I, of course, I'm in the dark. I heard uh, the show actually leaked, um, and I'm trying to stay off of the internet for a couple of hours until I actually see the show because I don't want it ruined. But 
what I'm hoping we see or you know, at least get some updates on is what Naughty Dog is working on. I would love to see some some third party deals that they have in the works because I don't think they're going to give us anything like Wolverine or Ghost of Tsushima 2. I don't think we're going to get some big, big announcements. Maybe we get hints to, to what could lead to big announcements in another show, but I think that they're going to concentrate on third party um, titles in this show, maybe a couple of firsts, not not a couple of firsts. Well, hopefully they do cover first party. That would be awesome. Give some kind of update, like I was saying, on what um Naughty Dog is working on. Some, something along those lines. But I really feel like if it's 14 titles that are going to be covered in a 30-plus minute show, uh, what is it, 20... I guess they could probably spend what an average of two minutes on each title. Let me see two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22. Yeah. About literally, you know, somewhere around like the two minute range of being able to cover each game, giving it about two minutes to really pretty much uh, show off what it's going to be doing, you know? So who knows, man, listen, The PSVR 2 has got an adapter in the works that's supposed to be on PC. Uh, Maybe some kind of way I'm still holding out hope on top of hope, which I don't think is going to happen, but a new Alex. I mean, not not a new Alex, but Half-Life Alex may be coming to the um, PSVR 2 possibly. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be great if it did. I didn't think this show was going to happen. Actually, if you go back and listen to the last episode, I said I did not think this was going to be a possibility. Um, I thought that it was a wrap. So some of those insiders, they did get something right. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. It might have been a guess. They might have knew for sure. But either way, the show is here later on today. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um. I, I, I'm really interested in what PSVR 2 games they're going to show um, because we know that that is struggling right now. But I do commend them for holding tight and, you know, continuing to put new software on that device. And uh, more importantly, uh, I'm just hoping that we, um you know, get some announcements of some games. Maybe we see that new controller that they were talking about that's supposed to have a longer battery life to it. Maybe they premiered that at the show. Something along those lines. I think this is going to be a good show. I think it's going to be decent, but I wouldn't, for this kind of show, I wouldn't get my expectations extremely high, only because this is more like the appetizer. You know, the appetizer before the actual, you know, meal comes out. So, yeah, it's going to be good. I think it's going to, you know, fill us up enough you know, until we get the big show, but I wouldn't put like all bets on this being an amazing show and them showing off with, um, who are they? Uh, the God of War studio, Sony Santa Monica. I don't think we're going to see anything on what Corey Barlog is working on or anything like that. Now I would love, absolutely love to be wrong. because who knows? We still don't know if we're actually going to get that official, um, showcase later on this year when it comes to PlayStation 5. We only know that it's a guarantee that Xbox is going to be there June 9th, which is um a, a day that I am very, very much so anticipating. And we know that Nintendo is going to be there as well doing their show. Ubisoft is having a show. And we know that the uh, Summer Game Fest is going to be happening. And IGN also said that they're going to have their own coverage as well. So when it comes to Sony and that big show, you know, we just know nothing. That's the only point that I'm making. But we will see what happens with this. I would caution you guys. Well, by the time y'all hear this and I get this uploaded and everything, the show should I don't know if it'll be over, but it'll be closer to happening. So if you are hearing this before the show actually happens, I would kind of stay off of social media, stay off of the the internet for a while, you know, if you don't want the show spoiled. But uh, we will see uh, what happens with this. But Cody, I'm going to get on back to your emails here, good brother. Let me go on and pull up your next email here. 
Okay, now the title of this email is Like the TARDIS, It's Bigger on the Inside. It says, uh, I know, well, Cody, you say, I know this is over a week old, but still. I didn't even register some of the shutdowns and layoffs from PlayStation. Take two and smaller studios like, F- how do you pronounce that? F- Fionn? Fionn? Uh, the maker of the, I know I pronounced that wrong. It's spelled P H E V I no O I O N Fion Fion something like that. And, and, and anyway, forgive me, Cody, if I pronounced it wrong, brother. But um, it says they are the makers of the first person, no, the FTP Dauntless game. I spent a lot of time in over the past few years. I've heard of Dauntless. I never played it though, Cody, but I have heard of it. Um, your email continues to say this is not the same as gun violence or suffering of refugees, but the same numbness happens when you hear about it so often that you just don't feel anything anymore. Oh, so you're talking about these shutdowns and layoffs. Yeah, man. Well, well, wait a minute. What happened when they laid them off, Cody? Hold on. Oh, you sent the article with it. Uh, Faithy, no, Faith Farm, Dauntless Studio, Phoenix Labs, lays off staff, cancels in development. God, dog. Yeah, that's terrible, man. I see what you mean. Yeah, after a while, you hear about these things, Cody, and it's like, it's just, I I, I hate to normalize it because these are real people losing their jobs, losing their careers, Um, you know, well, not their careers, but they're losing their position at a job which generates the income for them to be able to live and survive and take care of their family. So, yeah, you're right. It, it's, it, it, it is a terrible thing, Cody. And, and we're living in times where it could grief. This stuff is becoming just more and more prevalent. You know, where back in the day, Cody, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to get too long winded with this. I'm going to continue your email, but I'm just thinking back when, my parents were working or my grandparents were working. You could actually keep a job for years, 20, 30 years, retire, get a pension, you know, and, and live out your later retirement years in peace. But today, man, they are laying people off so fast. It's no real, it's no real job security like it used to be. If they can find a way to cut costs and that means your job is going to be sacrificed, they will do it in a heartbeat. So yeah, we live in a very, very shaky time when it comes to even just having, you know, um, employment, you know, being a, not just employment, but having employment that's going to last for some years. It's even very difficult to find that, Cody. And then housing prices are going up. Cra- anyway, anyway, I don't, I don't want to get too off topic. Let me get on back to your email, Cody. Um, you continue and say, I wanted to go on and do a big tear about how holding artists accountable is complicated, but bad. No, yeah, but bad and gross. People are bad and gross and should be called out. But that's that's a downward spiral and trying to read it just feels icky and makes me want to hug my cat and hide under my bed. So no, oh man, Cody, nah, brother, don't let it get to you like that, my brother. Yeah, Lee, nah, don't do that, good brother. Um, And uh, let me see, you continue to say instead, I think even though I love my Xbox, but kind of miss some Sony and Nintendo games. I look forward to a world where anybody can make any game they want and I will be able to have access to it somehow. I look forward to that reality. Now, 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 Cody. Yeah, brother. Um, ah, I will tell you this. It seems like if, if we're doing a projection of where the industry is going to go and are we ever going to get to that point where we have that one console that plays everything. It's the one and only console that you need. PlayStation games work on it. Nintendo games, Xbox games all work on this one platform and we're all under one roof. I would say, I think the closest thing we're going to get to that, at least for the foreseeable excuse me, the foreseeable future would be um, PC. 
Now, I'm not a PC gamer. I used to be back in the 90s. I told y'all that. Playing Police Quest, King's Quest, uh, Wolfenstein, Doom back in the day, all of that good stuff. But today, and I know they say that it's much easier today than it was back then, where you had to use MS-DOS, you know, put in A A drive or C drive, semicolon, all of that stuff. I mean, y'all, y'all remember the struggle if y'all were PC gaming back in the 90s. Stuff was wild. And then having to deal with all of the um the complications of making sure that the game is going to be able to run on your system, your console. I mean, even back then, Cody, I know you might remember this, brother, talking about the blast, the, the sound blaster back in the day. Sound blaster, you didn't even have sound on your dog or PC. You had to go out there and get this dog on sound blaster card in order to have dog on sound and and uh, sound effects and them actually talking. It was so expensive back then, but all of that is remedied. Pretty much you need a uh, a um a graphics card, GPU, CPU, whatever RAM and all. Uh, anyway, yeah, it just ain't my deal. But if we are going to get to that point, I think PC would be the one thing that we could look to to have that actually happen. But I'm going to tell you, Cody, I don't want that world, brother. I don't want it. It's dangerous to me. It is so doggone dangerous to have one company be able to run everything that monopoly stuff is real that's why for the man goodness gracious i'm telling y'all i don't want xbox to leave i don't want them to leave the industry i mean all signs are pointing to that happening in this next um conversation i want to have with y'all it's gonna you know go back to that but i don't trust sony yes i am a playstation 5 fan through and through I like the PlayStation way more than the Series X, and I don't even own the Series X, but it's only because the Series X doesn't have the games that I want to play. Now, granted, hey, Sinua Saga, woo, they got me on that one. They got me. They get a couple more of those out there, man, I'm telling you. Even if they don't, Sinua really got me on the hook, man. It, it, It does. It's really, really tempting me and, you know, almost... Pulling my hand to go on and hit that button to get it. But even though I am a huge PlayStation fan, I don't trust those mother lovers. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them because we got that preview of what a cocky PlayStation will and can do when it came to the PlayStation 3. Now, I understand some people say that they learned that lesson. They'll never do that again. I would never say that. I don't trust you. If you did it once, you'll do it again. So with Microsoft being out there, Xbox being out there, I know they're getting stomped terribly right now by PlayStation and Nintendo. And only bring up PlayStation in this equation because we know Nintendo is not going to go head to head with Sony. They're not going to do it. PlayStation beat them down. They ain't been back on the block since. Joker been taking the long way home. Instead of walking through the neighborhood, walking through the block, nah, I'm going to go down the street, up this street, around the corner, and then down the street to get home. They ain't walking through the block no more. Nintendo done got beat up bad enough. Now, granted, now, granted, I mean, they are really winning when it comes to the Switch. These jokers have been majorly successful. I don't even think that's a word. But the point that I'm making is, Nintendo is not going to push gaming forward when it comes to the graphical side of things. I have never seen a compelling story by a Nintendo studio, Zelda. Now, granted, I'm not the biggest Zelda fan, so I'm not going to speak on that. But, you know, Metroid, the Mario games, Luigi's Mansion, uh, Kirby, these aren't like heavy story driven games, even though I will say. When it came to Mario Odyssey, ah, dog brothers, I got it, bit darn, that game was dope. That that game was solid. So much so when I got to that one point in the game, man, god darn, that joker made me shed a tear. That joker made me shed a tear. Oh, man. Got to that one point they talking about being the one-up, uh, the, the song they was singing, you know, when Mario was going through the different 
phases of the different gang. Ah, dog, get it, man, hey, man, that tugged at the heartstrings right there, good brothers and sisters. Yeah, that got me, you know, and then did, 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 didn't help that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> It didn't help it. I I had I had a visitor coming to the room. It was like, hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm like, whoa, call me in a minute. I had to hurry up and put my head down and wipe my eyes real quick. Man, oh man, she crept up on me. Oh my goodness, just indeed. My wife caught me, man. She caught me. <laughs> she she asked me. She was very kind about it though. She said, wait a minute. You you know you know you know what's what's what, 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 what is going on? I said, hey, ain't that too much? You know, pollen in the air and whatnot. I don't even have allergies. But she was like, wait a minute. You, you know, I see you playing the game. What's going on? I said, you know what? I can't even lie to you. This dog on game tugged at me a little bit because it took me through a bit of a journey of my childhood. You know, so even though, you know, what I'm saying is it's not a deep story, any of the Nintendo games. That one time, yeah, they got me. That one good time. Darn. But my point is, man, I'm sorry for going off on a whole tangent with that. But my point is, Nintendo is not going to do the same things that PlayStation does to move stuff forward. I can't imagine a Nintendo game having ray tracing in it, real life graphics and all of that kind of stuff because they haven't done it yet. Now, granted, who knows what they're going to do with the Switch 2. They might completely come out the gate and have something amazing happen, you know, with the graphics and the different games that they come out with. I mean, we already were told that that's why they, they um, delayed the switch to was so that they could get their software up to where they want it to be. So they might come out the gate of beast, but until they do, I don't trust that PlayStation is going to do right by the consumer if they are the only go-to on the market. Just like I wouldn't trust that if we got one console that could play all of the games, Cody, I don't I wouldn't trust it, man, because they would rake us over the coals because they know nobody else. They 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 can't go to anybody else. They got to come to us. So I wouldn't want that, Cody, but I respect though. I truly do. I respect your um your take on it, though. I know it's a lot of people out there that would love to see that become a reality, Cody, where if you bought one game, um, no matter what it is, it'll play on a console. But I also think that that leads to innovation being stopped as well. Because if you don't have others out there competing, you know, making you work for your money, you know, these companies, these corporations, They'll just stay stagnant. We have multiple, um, we have multiple examples of that. You know, Madden every year, 2K coming out every year. You know, they add a little bit here, a little bit there, but not really pushing the envelope too much. I mean, if 2K, if NFL 2K football was still around, I'm telling you, Madden would have stepped up. But they, EA knew they just couldn't compete because if they thought they had a chance, of competing with them, they wouldn't have bought up the NFL license and made it exclusive, you know, because 2K was on the heels and they were better. And since, I mean, I played one Madden, um, it was the year that the Ravens won the Super Bowl. Um, but I haven't played a Madden since then. What was that? 2011? I don't even know. Hold on. What year was that? Hold on. What year did the Ravens win their second Super Bowl? Uh, 2013. So, yeah, I haven't played a Madden. Well, I know that was 2012 when it came out. So, yeah, 22, three, yeah, I guess 12 years I haven't played a Madden because I was just so mad with them, EA buying up the rights and just not really doing anything, you know, very innovative with it. So, yeah, competition is always key, if you ask me, and um, we need more of it. So I would never want to live in a place where it's just one console manufacturer to rule them all, and you got to go to them to get your games and, you know, your gaming, uh, your DLCs and all of that stuff, because they, they ain't going to play fair. They're going to take complete advantage 
of all of us, just like any corporation would do if it's only them that's in the game. But uh, Cody, before I get to your final email there, good brother, because I do believe, let me check here. I think you gave me one more. I think you sent me one more. Yeah, I got one more from you, Cody. But before I get to that, though, I wanted to bring up a conversation that I actually had that does pertain to Xbox. Now, earlier in the week when I did um the, the last episode, um I was I was asking you guys to write in, let me know if I had the right idea when it comes to Xbox actually outsourcing their um their manufacturing for a uh a Xbox. Them actually kind of giving the stats or the specs of what you know you need to have in order to make it run excuse me, or for it to be up to their standards. Um, someone wrote in to me that I don't want to, I don't want to name this person because they personally hit me up about this situation. So I will have their name remain nameless because I don't know if they really wanted me to include their name in this conversation. Uh, because they didn't email, they e- email me, they hit my phone direct. So me and this individual, and, and shout out to you, you know who you are, brother. But we had a very, very good conversation about this situation, you know, as far as um Xbox possibly just outsourcing um other third-party manufacturers making their, their console. So he gave me a different angle. Um, that I, I thought about it, but he really kind of brought it to light. So like I was saying in the last podcast, the only time I had ever seen this happen was with the 3DO where Panasonic, they were the original manufacturers, but then sometime down the road, I was in games. Well, it wasn't GameStop back then. It was a electronic boutique. I was in there one day and I said, well, who the world is gold star? You know, making a 3DO, what the world is this? I've never seen this before. I thought this was Panasonic's thing. Of course, the guy never answered. My, well, I didn't really even ask the guy. I was just more confused and just was like, man, this seemed like a knockoff. You know, that ain't Panasonic. I mean, of course, I never had the 3DO uh, growing up. I did get it, you know, years later. Um, I have it in the box, you know, but... um. At that time, it was just way too expensive. But the angle that this brother gave me was with, if this is the case, and they're going to have um, third-party manufacturers do this, how much are these consoles going to cost? Because with PlayStation, Nintendo, and, uh, well, I should say Sony, Nintendo, and, and Microsoft, they sell their consoles at a loss because they know that they can make up for the service. I mean, well, for the cost through their services, through their memberships and through the games that they sell them actually getting a cut of the games that are sold. So if you have a manufacturer that doesn't have any of those extra services to sell you, that they're just completely selling you just hardware, and they don't have anything else that they can profit off of, then how much are these consoles going to cost? Now, granted, Microsoft may work out a deal where if they sell a certain amount of games on a console, see, I don't know. That's where you get into murky waters. Like, how do you keep up with that? How do you keep up with what manufacturer is selling what? I understand they got records, but how do you break that down? So when when he mentioned that it would be a situation where they would probably be charging you how much it costs to make the console and more because they need to make profit, that's what really made a a complete red flag flash, you know, um, past my eyes, like, golly, could it be a situation where the next Xbox that's not being made or manufactured by Microsoft could possibly be like $800 because they're trying to get the cost of how much it costs them, you know, um, to manufacture it, 
manufacture it and get a profit. So where does that leave us when it comes to that kind of situation? I really don't know. Like I said, I don't like the fact that if this is true, because Microsoft hasn't come out and announced it yet, and I'm sure they'll probably get into a deeper conversation about how it's going to work and if it's going to be foolproof and, you know, as far as the build quality and all of that stuff, I'm sure they'll get into that if this does turn out to be true. But what kind of situation is that going to leave us in? Will it be another situation where, um, and he had brought this up, uh, where, okay, let's say Samsung, they start manufacturing these uh, different Xboxes, and it runs great. The games run fantastic on it. They're doing a great job. Yeah, the 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 um the the uh the hardware itself, the different chips, the the manufacturers that they used are top notch, and it's doing well. Theirs comes out to great success. But then you have someone, you know, as an example, I mean, just an example, you have someone like JVC come out there and they make one and woo, that thing ain't working. Oh, it ain't working. You ain't getting the frames that you would normally get. You ain't getting the dog on um, the performance. You know, it, it's just not working as great as the, the, uh, the Samsung one would, which would lead to fragmentation. You know, it would be a fragmented environment because each manufacturer is going to, you know, have a different, possibly a different quality of, you know, what kind of chipsets they'll be using their, their, um, their ability to make sure that the, uh, the console is, is running, uh, not running, but what is the word that I'm trying to think of? Um, golly, I almost had it. Uh, when, when you try to optimize optimization, you know, to make sure that it's being optimized to run the games the way that they're supposed to run, because I'm thinking of it like, again, this could be like a PC situation all over again. You know, you get with these different manufacturers, they're doing their thing, but each one is running it at a different frames per second. You know, even if it's cheaper, you know, you get the cheaper one, you know, versus the more high end one. Of course, we understand that you're going to get more if you pay more. But, you know, just having this possible situation of these guys trying to figure out how we can make this game work and run and, you know, it's running great on this hardware, but running poorly on this one. I just think, yeah, that that fragmentation, you know, everything being fragmented, it's going to be terrible, which is, again, why I don't want this to be the situation. I don't want this to be the case. I understand just like these console manufacturers make it so your game has to meet certain check marks and certain standards before they actually approve it to go to market or be available on the console. I understand that that's how they do that. Maybe that's a situation that Xbox possibly does or something along those lines. But to me, this almost sounds like PC esque, you know, kind of like a PC situation. And yeah, we know PC is a free form kind of situation it's it's really not regulated too much so i mean it just brought up those different questions you know as far as like this um possibility of xbox or microsoft going in this direction when it comes to their new console i don't know if you guys have more thoughts about this i would love to hear from you guys and i'll make sure that i put it on the the, the next listener feedback but i definitely want to thank that brother for writing in to me and let me know that. Thank you, my brother. Now, Cody, we are going to get into your final email here, my brother, and you're pretty much going to take us out, man. So this is the last email from email. <laughs> Always get tongue-tied, man. It never Will I ever be able to do an episode when I don't get tongue-tied? I, I, I highly doubt it, but you know, stay tuned. But anyway, Cody, let me read your, uh, your title of your final email here. Uh, the title is, This Bodes Poorly. 
Now, Cody says, I'm confused. Why, as an article toted by, what was that? Oh, that was my dryer. Uh, by Sun, I guess by Sony itself, sort of fall off the bus on this one and not get their info straight. Also, it seems his super keen pro AI in game development, but got super heated on how Sony portrayed his statements. Okay, all right, all right, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me pause there. Okay. Cody is talking about it was an interview that Neil Druckmann did. And I believe, let me see, Cody, you sent man, Thank you, Cody. You sent me articles to all of these, man, so I can actually look it up. Okay, so th- this uh, article came from Kotaku. Um, it says the Neil Druckmann interview covered topics like using AI to write dialogue in Naughty in no dialogue and Naughty Dog's the next game. So this is uh what Cody is talking about. I guess Neil Druckmann probably came out there, started talking about um AI writing these different scripts and uh possibly taking away different jobs. So so before I get too far, let me um continue on with your email. Um he says, I'm like, bro. You worked for them. Why didn't your team review and okay this? Also, people are mad at you saying AI could write scripts to cut costs, which people hate. And he didn't, and he didn't say that was wrong, but other things were. It continues. He says, if you really want to cut costs, cut salaries and executive bonuses, they aren't in the pit coding or working on art or voicing main characters. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, man. Like like I said, man, what was his name? Strauss Zelnick? Man, this Joker gave himself millions of dollars extra a year, but at the cost of him cutting a ton of different jobs. So yeah, Cody, I agree with you, man. Cut these big wigs, executive bonuses down, cut that stuff down, man, and keep these guys around. Because, um, Having games like Grand Theft Auto in your in your stable, as well as like Max Payne, Red Dead Redemption, those kind of games, 2K, underneath your umbrella. I mean, stop it, man. Yeah, I agree with you, Cody, but let me continue on with your email. He says they aren't, yeah, I'll start it there. He says they aren't in the pit coding or working on art or voicing main characters. They aren't QA or whatever. Cut the top 10 executives to say i guess to save 300,000 a year not 24 million or whatever boom you just saved you 23.7 million dollars for one person nine to go do you still need to cut 400 people that make less than 60,000 a year each don't mind me i'm venting Cody, I'm going to tell you something, brother. By the way, Cody, shout out to you for all of your emails, brother. Thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, man, it just seems very unnecessary. It seems like at every single twist and turn, these companies are trying to cut costs. Now, I will say, this happened um, yesterday or the day before yesterday. Sony had had a, a call, and this, this all goes in into your email, Cody. I don't want you to think I'm trailing off. Um, but they had had this call, I think an investor's call, the other day, and it was said on the lines of they had so much staff that they had acquired over COVID. You know, as COVID was going on, They bulked up staff, got a lot of people in. But, you know, after COVID was over, that was when they actually started letting people go. Now, this is Sony. This is just Sony. Sony is only speaking for them um, at this meeting. But that leaves the question, though, well, leads to the question, how many extra people did they hire? During that COVID time, I understand some people think that they're balancing everything out, balancing the checkbooks and stuff like that. But no, these guys are continuing, even though they're cutting hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of jobs. They are continuing 
to try to find different ways, other ways to continue to cut the cost. So I understand what Sony is saying. They might've bulked up too much, but darn, I got to believe that with these different technologies, these AI, this AI possibly being able to write a script taking dozens of people out of just that role of writing alone. I have to believe that this is exactly what they want. Y'all remember a couple of months ago, um, EA said that they were working on a technology where they would be able to take your voice and make your voice the main character's voice. So they wouldn't even have to have any actor or actresses, well, voice actors and voice actresses come in to play the role. But no, we'll just take your voice, use your voice, and bam, that'll be the voice actor. And I'm like, God, dog. So they're just trying to continue to cut costs instead of doing what Cody said. Cut some of these big wigs. Cut some of their salaries down to make sure that you can keep the talent. Keep these guys that are invested in the company as far as their talent goes and what they do, excuse me, what they do to to um, make sure that they are always producing, making money for your company. You know, cut these guys' salary down. Again, Strauss Zelnick, that joker was tripping on how much extra he gave himself and just cut everybody else off. So, yeah, I, I get it. We we are, again, just to, you know, bring it back up one more time, we are definitely in a different time when it comes to gaming um, as far as these companies and how much resources they really want to put on these games, how much money they're trying to save. And I get it. That is corporate not even, like I said before, it's not even corporate America. It's just corporations in general. If they can find a way to save a buck, save a nickel, save a dime, they're going to do that because they want to continue to make all of the money, as much money as they possibly can. Anytime you got a company like Microsoft laying people off by the thousands, and that's a $3 trillion company, if I'm not mistaken, then God, dog, what are we doing? What is the end goal to pretty much pay $2 an hour pretty much to employees for the most part? Like just trying to cut so many different positions that it comes out to, you know, I mean, I know it'll never be $2 an hour. I'm being super extra with that. But it just seems like they're just trying to cut costs all the way. I mean, down and out. And it's not just, I mean, man, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to sit up here and act like I'm all fake outrage because it's not, it's not fake outrage. It's just like, wow, when, when is enough enough? You know, when do you make enough money where you can say, okay, we're good. We can make sure we got our employees here. Everybody keeps a job. Everybody keeps health care, insurance, you know, be able to take care of their families. We're good. We're making more than enough. We're all right. You know, like where are the Capcoms of the world? Capcom said that they're doing well. Their numbers are doing fine. They're giving their employees raises and whatnot. Shout out to them, God dog. Man. Good grief. Just wish it was more companies like that. But uh, Cody, man, again, brother, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, Neil Druckmann, he kind of, yeah, he put his foot in his mouth with this one. <laughs> oh, man, I don't even know how an AI written script would even come out, man. I, You know, I, I, I just don't know. Whenever I think about AI taking over something, I think about those videos, and we've all seen them, where you get that voice that actually um, is reading, you know, it's not a human voice. It sounds human, but you can tell by the way that it's reading. Nah, that's, 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 a, that's AI. That's not a real person doing that. It kind of takes the soul out of it. You know, it, it, it takes that human factor away, you know, from it when they're reading it or it, the AI is reading whatever it's telling you. It's like, where's the human element? In, in, in this situation. And that's the thing that I'm afraid of. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll say afraid because I, I'm a huge, huge gaming fan. It's the only thing I've ever known pretty much my whole life, you know, before sports, before 
anything else. It was gaming. I started gaming when I was six, six years old on the Atari 2600. You know, so it's the, it's the only thing that I've ever stuck with for this long. I'm 45 years old, 45 years old, you know, so this is something I really, really love. I'm very passionate about it. And just these different changes that are going on in the industry, I can't help but to have concerns because we don't know how it's all going to turn out in the end. So I'm just worried about that human element of the games uh, being developed, um, you know, still being there. If it's AI that's writing the scripts, if it's AI doing the voice acting, you know, it's just certain things that I think are just better when it has that human touch, you know, that human influence, you know, when it comes down to it, but we'll definitely see what, uh, what happens with this in the near future, um, with all of these different companies, with the AI, with (sighs) the unfortunate, uh, situation of people losing their jobs, you know, as a result, but I uh, will definitely stay tuned to all of this. But again, I want to thank uh, you, Cody Clark, again, for um, writing in uh, with four different emails, brother. You definitely helped to carry the show to get us to almost an hour uh, to get here. And I also want to thank uh, that gentleman who, again, will remain nameless just out of respect because he hit my line personally so uh you know i want to thank you guys and you the listeners for being here thank y'all so much so with that being said if you guys do want to be a part of the next listener feedback and let your voice be heard you can do it two different ways you can either call in at 443-380-0281 or you can email the show and the email address is the analog circle podcast at gmail.com i was your host keon mitchell i'm about to get out of here i got to go to work i'm gonna be up in buffalo new york this time so um you know i'm gonna get ready to get on out of here in about the next hour or so and i am anticipating this Sony show that is going to happen. We're definitely going to talk about this. Well, I should say PlayStation show. We're going to talk about this on Sunday because we will be back at it again on Sunday. And whoa, we might have some fireworks coming, brothers and sisters. So with that being said, I'm out of here. You guys get out there, play some games, and enjoy yourself. You guys take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.